Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? So I'm going to share my screen now. Great. So before I start, just want to say thank you for inviting me to this event. Is I am really privileged to able to talk to you about data and my journey so far in the industry. And also thank you for revolution, basically, to how we come across this like. Um, I was looking for a job, and then <laughs> and then this when when Ben Brady sent found, found out my my profile, he said that oh why don't you talk to our event? You will be um, interested to know more girls and stuff. So I thought it would be quite interested to just talk about my story, and I hope that you can relate it to it as well. And and because I'm presenting at the moment, so if I miss your message, and and Rachel will tell me at the end. So yeah, just want to make sure you know that. So the topic is about. Is it okay to be different in the industry? So for me is what, what different means because for different, everyone got different meaning. So for me is I'm looking at four different ways. One is culture, one is gender, one is being an immigrant and one is about data and mathematics. So what I mean by that, so I just want to tell you a little story about me first. Um, I am growing up in three different family, a little bit unusual and different. The reason is I got my birth parents in Hong Kong. I, I living with them until I'm nearly 17. The reason I would live behind my Brit, um, Hong Kong parents is I failed my GCSE exam and I need to come overseas to study in A-level. So that is how I come to the Britain in uh, Midland, actually. And during the time, I, it was supposed, it was a government-funded program. It's called Exchange Student Program. They are the ones that allocate the student to the local British family. I'm supposed to stay in with them for one year, basically learning about the English, the culture, and just go to school like normal students. Just more like how to integrate with the family and the society and everything. Just understand the British way, if that makes sense. I have been there supposed to be from year 12 and then they've been really kind to me and asked me, well, do you want to stay behind and finish your year 13? Then I'm like, oh, okay, if there is a chance, I'll just want to finish my year 13. And then after that, I apply for university and then they just like, well, if you want to stay with us for the university time, just stay with us. So at the end, I'm staying with them for seven years before I move on. During this time, I call them mommy and daddy. And when they introduce uh, how many kids they got, they, when they ask, they will say that they got two. One is me and one is their birth child. And the other thing I want to tell you is um, when my host mom father passed away, um, he, he's not really, um, how was it? He's not really which family, but when he passed away, he said that he's going to give some money to his grandchildren. So we got 12 of us, including myself, in the newspaper, everything. My name was on it as part of the family. So it, that is really lovely and I'm really glad that I have them. And the last piece of the family is my ex-boyfriend. So when I came over, like I say, I'm only 17 years old. I met him when I'm doing A-level as well. I've been with them for about 15 years before we breaking up. So, but. Again, I still call them mommy and daddy. So that is why I need to be confused when I call mommy and daddy. Well, I've got three different set of parents. But what happened is they treat me completely differently. So my birth parent is really traditional Chinese. They are like, I don't know if you heard about the term Asian F. So what it mean by that is like, I need to be highly performed in my exam if I'm not getting an A. Is failure. If I don't get anything better than, you know, if I'm not the top of the class, it's bad and stuff. So that is what happened. So on my A-level result date, I was supposed to be going to Nottingham University to do math and with scholarship. But at that moment of time, I got two A and a C. C is in home economics. Because of that, I got rejected by Nottingham and my scholarship is ticking off. My birth parent, the first thing they said to me is, what the hell you are doing? Why are you doing that? Why you fail? Why, you know, it's like basically making me cry. Literally, they own the phone call with them. But my whole family and my ex-boyfriend being, like parents being really, really lovely to me and said to me that, 
two A and a C is a really good result. Why are you being so upset about it? I know that Nottingham don't want you anymore, but we can go for clearing to find a better university, not better, but you know, another university to do the course. So at the end, my ex-boyfriend mom was the one that calling to different universities, including Manchester, York, you know, you name it. At the end, I got seven different university offer and saying that I can go anywhere that I want. But what I want to say is like, from that, you can see the culture is different. Even from the one year when it's like, I haven't done anything wrong. I try my best to get my exam result, but the outcome is so different. So that is the first thing I want you to bear in mind a little bit. I got a reason why I want to tell you that. Okay, second. So being a Chinese culture, being a girl, sometimes is like a second class citizen. Why I'm saying that is I, that is a quote from a one really famous person. I want you to read it first. What she say is, my family tried to educate me in the way that they wanted to be. I want to learn mathematics, but and my, I got it from my father, but my mom and dad doesn't agree with that. So that is why she, she being really persistent and trying to give in, but at the end, she got what she wanted. And the one that who say that is for a nightingale. That had been crawled 200 years ago, but I can tell you right now is, 20 years ago, when I go into university, I say exactly the same thing to my parents. They're saying that I want to be a mathematician. I want to do study in math. And the reason why they've been quite rejected because of Chinese doesn't see mathematics as a professional that you can move in forward. And also they are afraid that, you know, they, they want you to be accountant because you're good at math. You, you will be able to get a living being accountant. But I didn't give in. So that is why. Another thing, being a girl is a really horrible thing sometimes when like growing up. Last time is being a Chinese. So like I say, I'm an immigrant in UK. I sometimes got told that, oh, you're good at math because you're Chinese. You speak with really strong accent. But I, I did tell you, honestly, that made me upset. The, the reason is not upset, upset to the point I'm crying, but... For me, communication is about, I have a heart, want to talk to you properly. Not about the accent that I got. Uh, if you ask me, do I got a strong accent? I would say to you, yes, I, I know that. Do I even try to attempt to get rid of it or learning the Korean accent that they, they love? I would say to you, I tried it before. The reason is I, I thought if I get rid of my Chinese accent can help my career. If I get rid of Chinese accent, people will see me differently. I did think about that. But at the end of the day, I didn't do it. I stopped. The reason is, I think, I don't know, have you heard about that quote? I think it's really true. I have a, a foreign accent is because that is my second language. It's nothing wrong with that. I know that sometimes I may be making some difficult you know, you may be difficult to understand me when I pronounce some of, some of the word, but if we don't understand each other, people will tell me that, oh, can you speak slower? Can you repeat what you said to me? Can you explain to me what you're trying to say? Can you find another way of talking about it? That's all perfectly fine. But if you ask me if I can get rid of my accent for my work being a data scientist, would that be different? I would say to you, no. The only difference is I think I will be more confident when I talk to you. But I don't think at the moment, if you see me, I don't think I will say to you that I'm not a confident person. So, yeah, but if you ask me difficult, I would say another thing difficult for me is spelling is not something that I'm really good at. So what I mean by that is I always mix up private hospital to perfect hospital. I know it shouldn't be like that, but sometimes I just need to pay a lot more attention than you guys that is English is your first language. Sometimes I just can't see it, but it doesn't, you know, discredit that I'm a really good data scientist. So that is another thing. I don't know you, but being an immigrant, another thing that stopped me being progress in the industry is the 11 year long visa application. The reason for that is 
sometime because I'm not when I only become a British citizen when I'm 2013. So it took me 11 years to take the British passport. During this time, I don't know how much you know about immigration, home office, but they're changing law basically every year. You just don't know that when you need to have your sponsorship to, to stay in UK to work. Sometimes you are not allowed to do that and sometimes you don't. So during my time in there, I, I said to you that getting a visa is really effect on my career choice and also the way that I treat my career. And the reason for that is, I will tell you in a minute the, the difficulty I got, but do I feel bad about you know, the home office and for doing a, a visa, everything like that? I would say no, because they need to protect the UK society. So that is why it's fine. But at the same time is, am I frustrated? 100% or maybe even 200% because you know that sometimes I can do the job. I just don't have the visa to do the job. So a lot of things need to change. So some of the company is good that you got like tier two, that is mean that the sponsorship visa, but a lot of company is not afford, able to afford to do so. So for that, it takes a lot of time. And also sometimes what I got is when I apply for the job, it's supposed to be a permanent. They change the contract to, either fixed term contract or contractor because for, they're allowed to take me in, but because of my visa problem, they cannot do it forward. So another thing that I got difficulty, like I say, my parents is a really challenging one, let's put it this way for me. And then when I explained to them that I want to be a mathematician because at that moment of time, we're talking about 2009, Data science is still a quite a new career choice. No one really know about what, what data science is at that moment. What I mean by that is I cannot fully explain to them that what data scientists do. That makes sense. And also I can only tell them that I'm really good at math, but how can I translate those into data? I, I honestly can't. So that is another thing that the closest thing that I can explain to them is I want to be a statistician, but that is not a data scientist just only about. So for me, it's very difficult to explain those elements to them. So here I am. I am having a, a little career time. So basically, I'm working in the career for about 15 years now, mainly in the UK healthcare and life science. And I'm really good at what I'm doing. I really love my math. I really love data. I really love food. I want to do more about charity. So at the beginning of my career, I'm working in NHS. I don't know how many of you were in NHS before. So I started at Band 4. That is about 16K a year. But at that moment of time, when I need to apply for my visa, I need to earn at least £30,000 a year to qualify to satisfy the reason. So what I did was I, I tried to get promotion very quickly. So what happened was because I need to get to, so band four is about 16,000, band five, 20, band six, 24, and then band seven at that moment time is about 30. So for me to able to apply that reason, I need to go to band seven within 18 months. And that I, I need to get those money before I apply for the visa. It's not that, oh, I just got the Ben 7 30K uh, contract, then, was, um, then the visa, the home office will be happy. It's not, it's I need to have those money in my bank before I can apply for the visa. So you can tell that for that, I have been changing job quite a lot because I, I cannot think of anything else that I can do because after you being, after graduated, you don't want to work part-time job anymore. I did that, but I don't want to do that anymore. And also during that time, I'm trying to do a little bit charity work. The reason for that is I'm trying to get promotion. So that is why I'm trying to get other experience that I cannot get in the NHS. What I mean by that is when, I, when you're a junior, they, they won't give you a lot of like, management style type of work to do. So that is why I'm trying to get it with the charity work. And normally the charity that I'm choosing is more about 
they can do healthcare and data. So that is fit for my purposes. So you can tell that, well, you're doing quite different. It's quite purpose why you're doing that, I would say to you. Yes. And the reason for that is I, own, I want to get my visa done. And the other reason why I want to get to promotion so quickly is, again, my parents. Um, in the Chinese culture, after you, after, after you graduate from university, we need to pay them money every single month to, for them to survive. So my parents quite rely on me on financial situation. So a little me, I thought, well, if I work hard for the first five years, very, very quickly to the mid-management level, then I can have comfortable money that I can, I can you know, make my parents happy. And also, you know, I can do the work that I like to do and I can find my interest. So in other words, I can have my freedom back. But unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Um, the reason what I'm saying that is, I try my best to, to go to the management level, like meet management level very, very quickly. In the way, I, the people that are around me, it is supportive, but at the same time, not really supportive. So what I mean by that is, when you're in the company, they will say that, well, you should have worked for about 18 months before you get promotion, before you can do anything. But I agree with them. If I have the time to, to, to stay longer, to do one job before I get promotion, I will do that. But because of the visa, I can't really have that kind of luxury to say, well, uh, uh, stay another year before you moving on. So every time when I know that I can, I'm good enough to go to the next level, I will apply for a next level job. I did explain to my, at that moment of time, my line manager and people around me. So some of them see my CV and say, I think you're jumping. I think your CV be really jumping. I don't think you should do that. But another flex side is I'm lucky enough to meet a lot of people who understand the situation. And the, another reason is my CV, I work hard to prove to them that I can do quicker. But so that is another thing. So that little circle there, the second part is, is the moment that I finally got my UK passport. So I don't need to worry about my visa anymore. And that moment of time, I kind of in the mid level, not in the head of department yet, but at the moment of time, I just kind of like, I'm just under become a head of department. I'm, I'm using, so being a Chinese is quite good in one way is because a lot of company trying to push the um, BAME agenda a little bit further. So because of that, I got selected to be the first group of people in the BAMD uh, management program to be, a, you know, to be become a next step of management staff, if that makes sense. So in that period of time, I'm really happy because I'm in the level that I want to, my financially okay, and my parents was happy. And the other thing is the way that I'm changing my, the, the charity work that I'm doing as well. So I at that moment in time, I feel like I am good enough. I know the energy is a little bit better than before. Not, not, not everything, but good enough that I can, maybe I can do something more about math. How can I get more people like me to work in NHS? Because I, I know that NHS is really big as company that who need data scientists, who need data analytics. Work so that is why I'm working with different like charity more like a um, STEM background to get more if that makes sense. So I have been really comfortable for that five at the end of the five three four years in NHS. I work in different department. I do a project. I didn't chase a uh, um, promotion anymore because I only go to another project or promotion when I feel like I I can go to the next step. So the next step I want to tell you is. So you can see a little diary is, well, why you suddenly change from NHS to a consultancy? So that is another interesting story. So at that moment of time, I'm working in NHS, England. I live in Leeds, um, but looking after hospital in, uh, in Manchester area. 
I'm representing the Northwest Hospital to in NHS England in London for a meeting. So on the way from London to, to Leeds to London, sorry, Leeds to London, I met a gentleman on the train. He, he got his laptop open, Excel spreadsheet open and trying to do some formula on the Excel spreadsheet with some hospital data. I'm like, okay, um, you want to do something, but you are not able to do it. Should I say something or should I not say something? But because of who I am, I like to talk. So I asked him about 10, 10 minutes later after he's really struggling, I said to him, I was like, oh, I'm a data scientist in the NHS. Uh, I, I'm using Excel and looking at the data quite a lot. Is there something I can help you with? Little that I know, I didn't realize that he is the uh, he is one of the consultancy company that who providing service for NHS. He is the director for the healthcare department. So after this journey, two two hour journey from Leeds to London, he asked me if I got LinkedIn and also can I send my CV over to him. Then I thought, yeah, why not? I, I. I don't know, I don't think there's nothing to do, so I did that. So afterward, he set up a meeting and said to me, well, would I be able to talk to his team about my experience in NHS and also how I use data in NHS? I'm like, oh, okay, another free trip to London. Why not? I, I go to it. I didn't realize that that was an interview. And when I coming out from the office, he rang me and said, oh, I would like to offer you a job in London. Will you be happy to take over, take, take it out? But the only difficulty is the job needs to be in London. It cannot be in Yorkshire or in Manchester anymore. So for me, I'm never going out from NHS. I always work in NHS. And I just thought, well, that is a really good opportunity. Why not? So I worked in the consultancy company for two years. I learned and other different things that I didn't learn from NHS. So being consultancy, they more encourage about, you know, using a new methodology, new technology to, to do data sciences, to do data science. And also they are training me up to how to present myself a little bit better. So that is not something that I did in NHS. I don't need to learn how to do Excel and, and PowerPoint, to be honest. Very weird that when I work in NHS that I need to do a big presentation. Very weird that when I work in NHS, I need to write a scientific paper. Very weird that I would go to talk to different clients because of uh, uh, how can NHS work with them to make them lie better. So for me, that two year is amazing. And also I want to do more. And I thought, you know, the world is my oyster now. I can, you know, I got the experience. I got the money. I got everything. I can do better. So I start doing a little bit freelance job. And then that freelance job, including teaching data science, teaching how to do data visualization, teaching people like younger kids to do like data story. So anything related to data that I can get hold of, I will do it. Some of them is freelance work. Some of them is charity. So, but at that moment of time, I start to think about is, oh, can I do this kind of charity work more strategically, more up level? Because I know that there's a lot of people out there who would love to do the same thing as me, but how can I group them, group of people together? How can I make it better systematically? So that is another thing happened. So 2019 is my breaking point. Um, at work, so you say that I'm working in a consultancy company, everything goes so well, why you suddenly want to be a freelancer? Okay, so I, for that two years after that, I'm, I'm able to get promotion in my current, that current team because of the budget issue. The reason for that is because they merge with another company. So when they, after the merger from two companies, they need to adjust the um, um, money, the, the pay grade for everyone. So for that, I, I coming out worse. So it's unfortunate. And then if you ask me, so why didn't you try to get promotion in other team? Actually, I tried. I got four different offers from different other team. However, we didn't realize that is I already in the top of the next level pay grade. So they offer me a promotion by asking me for a 3% deduction on my pay. 
for that reason, I'm, I just feel really frustrated. I'm like, well, you give me promotion, but you can't give me a pay cut. So I'm not doing it. But if you ask me, if I got a chance again, we, I work with them again, I would say to you 100% and definitely. It's just unfortunate in 2019 that the system is, is not working for me. It doesn't mean that they're a horrible company or didn't learn anything. So it's just like that. And the other thing happened. Um, I got a t- um, top 100 technology in woman in UK award. So I was really happy, as you can tell, because I finally find, finally I found the moment I feel like, oh, I can, I, that is a milestone that I can say that I actually good at what I'm doing. What I want to do is not wrong. And I'm finally able to tell my birth parent that what I'm doing is okay. I'm not saying great, it's okay. But um, I, my father said on to me when the moment that he found out I win the award, I was heartbreaking. So before I told you what he said to me, I want to go back into 2008. So 2008 is the day that I got my master's degree certificate. On my graduation day, just coming out from, you know, that big hall when you got your certificate, my father said to me, it will be so much better if you're a girl, if you're a boy. And I'm, I'm just shocked. I'm just stunned. I'm like, hang on a minute. What, what it, it being a boy is so important to you or being a boy, I can only get your approval for being a boy. I cannot do anything. So for that, I wasn't crying on that day, but I was really hurt by this comment. I was really upset by his comment. I just, I had been trying my heart out to, to figure out how can I get his approval. So when I win that award, I thought, finally, I, I can get his blessing for me that I'm not being accountant as he want me to be. I can be, you know, I'm doing a data scientist that, you know, got the a, a, a milestone, got the notification that, people want it but what he said to me is oh so you win the award yes daddy i win the award um how much money you get from it i'm like what 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 do you mean how much money i get from it then he said well if you're winning an award meaning that you should have some money with it so if there's no money why would you do it it's the first time ever at that moment of time i said to my father I cannot talk to you right now. I, I, I ring you back later. I can't. I just can't. I hang up and cry my eyes out. To be honest with you, this happened in 2019, but every time when I talk about it, it still hurt me. It still pain me because I honestly don't know what else I can do to get his approval or what else I can do to make him feel like that I haven't done anything wrong. So what I did, after that, I was really upset, but I blog about it. Not, not, not having a go with my father is not like that. I, uh, you know, he is one of the persons supposed to be not, not me no matter what. But you, you want him to say that, congratulations. Sound easy, but it's not. So I just write it down to tell them that, well, maybe being a Chinese culture, is, is, that, is that? Or is it I'm the only one in the world thing that, if I'm asking for too much for getting my father approval. After I put the blog out, a lot of 18 and 19 years old girls contact me and say to me that he, they have a similar experience that this approved by their family for what they want to do. So that is why I find it really important for me to do more charity work because I want to say to them that just because our family is not approval on what we are doing, but it, we are not wrong. And if you ask me, is that a rock bring me a lot of uh, uh, glory or money or financial income? I would say to you, no, but it's a milestone that for me to tell me that actually I can do it. I can do the work that I love to do and I can do it better. So that is how I suddenly want to do freelance and charity work. And also the freelance bit is basically giving me more um, time and freedom because sometimes I, if I want to work with like like um, um, diabetic UK for example I cannot do it because I'm still working for a cons- uh, consultancy company that has a permanent staff 
So we have a conflict of interest. So that is why that I thought working for freelance may be something that I would like to do. So that is how I am. So for my charity journey so far, so if you see that I've put it into three different phrases, include, you know, linked with my career and timeline. So for me, I know it sounds really bad when I first doing it, I honestly doing it because I need to get more experience onto my CV for driven my career. I cannot go to the, my first management. You know, when you become a senior analyst and then trying to be a, a manager, they will keep saying to you that, oh, someone is better than you or someone have a management experience, but you don't have it. So that is why that I'm trying to bring the gap down. And that is the reason why it's driven me to do more charity work. And then the phase two is the moment that after I got my visa. So everything can calm down now because I can finally doing things that I love I love math, I love data, but at the same time, it's, I love my local places. And you will find out that a lot of local charity or healthcare projects that they're doing, they are not really using the data well enough for their advantages. So that is why how I want to work with them a little bit more. So now I'm in my kind of so-called phase three. I want to work with different charity that I can do in a strategic level. I would like to do more STEM background, diversity and healthcare, because I think that is important. And that is me that I want to do it. So that is at the moment, if you ask me, am I successful? I mean, for the last two years, I'm doing a lot of work, but I would, you know, if anyone now hear this message and saying that, oh, I got an idea, maybe we can do it together. Please let me know because you never know that. How can we do it together? And I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to move forward. So if you ask me right now is being freelancer and with charity, is it hard? I would say to you, yes, because normally I got a so-called my primary client. They will more like more about business life. So I will not, I'm charging them more like a market rate because I can, you know, that is the main income that I got. And then the other places that I'm doing charity work is more for me is math and data. So I, I don't know if you heard about institutional mathematics or York University and math for girls. So I, that is more traditional type of like STEM promotion. I like, um, tell them like being a math graduate, what can you do in your career, being a mentor or being mentor with. And also um, with York University, I'm helping, I'm in the board to helping them to say that, well, actually uh, your course for doing math student is not appropriate for the industry anymore because you know if you want they be more employable they you should teach them more like python for example because before that they don't really do a lot of programming or you know just helping them as an industry uh, expert to give them an advice that what should be doing and then for math for girl is more about um how can make math more interesting for the young girl in their younger age so sometime between a like year four or five to year 13 kind of thing so that's what i did and then the other thing what i did is i don't know if you heard about the charity called water harvest or um, buttercup so they are proper charity that doing work but like i say being a charity they don't have that much money to employ a data scientist so that is why i'm helping them to do a pro bono type of charity work so for why i'm choosing water harvest is after I finish off with the consultancy company, I asked my, I, I sent a message in LinkedIn. I say that I would like to do a project that linked to uh, diversity, uh, inequality, and also data. If anyone want to have that kind of project, just contact me. And they do. And that is a project about building a water tank in India. And they are trying to build it in a rural area. The reason for that is they know if, and the, the family in India, they don't have clean water. They normally, it's the young girl that who will take about four to five hours every day, just go to the river to take water. So that is why they want to try to improve, you know, healthcare. They want to improve the water cleanliness. And also if the girl don't need to do the, you know, neighbor intensive work, at least those four hours, they can go back to school. So that is the reason why I help them that much. I still helping them at the moment. So the last thing that I'm really proud of is because I'm opening using a freelancer's work, I'm working with another charity that called Pioneer. So 
pioneer was set up by an 18-year-old girl that who want to promoting math with the girl. And, and then what we did is we set up a data science summer course for year 10 to year 11 and 13 girl to come for this summer. So we are doing that at the moment. We actually started last week. So I'm quite proud of it. So that is what I did for that. And you think about anything that I can do better, please let me know. But okay, so that is whole my career journey. So go back to the question. Is that okay to be different in the data industry? I will say to you that I think in short answer, yes. I think you need to actually. You, if you're thinking about in the traditional way of thinking, being successful, it's just one pathway, one framework that you're doing. But we're in a modern world now. Life can be different. But the thing is, we haven't got that much voice on the senior table to tell them that the pathway can be different and different is not bad. And by sharing the story with you, I wish that to tell you that I come from a really different background and I can, I'm not saying I'm successful. I would say that I find my place in the oil industry that I feel like, well, you can do the same. I hope that some of my, you know, you won't know when we have the, exactly the same experience or life journey, but I hope that little bit and bobs that I, I got will be, you know, echo your experience as well. So that is why that I would like to talk to you in here to tell you that don't be afraid to be different or don't be afraid that you think you're not confident with because what you're not confident with, maybe all of us in here got the same thing. We just never talk about it. And sometimes uh, I think the most important thing is about communication. Sometimes it's not that people don't want to help you. They don't know that is an issue. They don't know that you're struggling. They don't know that what you're experiencing with. So for me to able to tell you that, well, at the very beginning of my career, you from an outsider, we look like me, it's like, Carrie is really career driven. She just wants to get promotion all the time. But if now I tell you that the reason why I need to get promotion, to be honest, is quite a practical one because I don't want to deport from the UK government. So that is what I need to do it. But we, I treasure for those experience. I will say to you that when I look back now, I think though 11 years of the research chasing journey helping me. If I don't have that, I won't be able to push myself. If I won't be able to say that, oh, okay, I'm banned for analysts now. I think I'm okay to go to the next level for band five. Should I do it? Yes, I will do it. But if you said I don't have the visa problem, I think I will wait. Oh, I've only been here for six months. Maybe I should stay there for another six months before I think about promotion. So I'm not saying all good and bad because everyone got their own journey. So I'm not saying that you need to follow my footsteps or anyone's footsteps. I would say that find a path that you think is more comfortable or suitable for you. If you ever struggle and you want to talk to people, that is a lot of people that you can talk to. Sometimes it's not your family because it's not they don't want to help me. Even for me at this moment of time, I would say to you, my father, I would say, no, I don't think he hates me. I don't think he doesn't love me. He just don't understand it. And I still haven't found a way to get to him to tell him all about that. But I'm lucky enough to have my host parents and my boyfriend parents to here to telling me that, well, parents they love can be different. And I being a daughter, I haven't done anything wrong. It's just different. So here you are, and I hope that you find my story that relatable. And if you ever want to talk to me and ask anything, just feel free to. That is everything. Thank you.